tonight um, and to welcome everyone who's viewing this uh, on Facebook Live uh, or uh, any other uh, social media platform. So thank you all for your interest in, uh, in our town and, and in the affairs of our town and in helping um, be informed and, uh, and, and provide input to our town. So with that, uh, I'll uh, now um, acknowledge that the land upon which we gather is the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq, and we pay our respects to the indigenous Mi'kmaq people of this territory, past, present, and future. At this time, I'd also like to ask anyone who has a conflict of interest with any of the items on our agenda today to please declare at this time. If not, we'll move on to the minutes of our regular monthly meeting of 9th of September 2020. Um, anyone have any uh, additions, revisions, or any other um, comments on the meeting minutes of 9th of September 2020? Your Worship, should we approve the agenda first? Or? Um, I'm sorry, yeah, I always jump over that. I don't know yeah. why. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I jumped over the approval of the agenda. Um, and I also was remiss in, um, in not giving a special welcome to uh, Corporal Mike Lutley of the RCMP who's attending tonight. So thank you for attending, uh, Corporal. Really appreciate your presence here tonight. So uh, with that, uh, I'll ask for. Um, a motion for approval of the agenda if there are no suggestions for additions or deletions or any other changes. So moved. Any seconder? Second, thank you. Okay, um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Contrary minded, motion carried. Okay, we'll now move to the minutes of uh, 9th of September 2020. Any changes, revisions, or additions to, uh, to the minutes uh, that anyone noticed? If not, I'll ask for a motion for approval of the minutes. Thank you. Second? I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion carried. Okay, at this time we'll also ask for any, if there are any presentations from the floor. Any, um, Robert, is there anyone has indicated that they'd like to make a presentation from the floor? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll now go to my report um, for the period since our last council meeting. It's in your package. Uh, just a, a couple of highlights. Um, the, um, uh, I just want to publicly say thank you uh, also to Minister Myers and uh, the staff at uh, TIE, the Transportation and Infrastructure and Energy, for all their good work that's being done in Stratford. Uh, a number of projects, uh, McKinnon Drive, the, um, the underpass, the um, um, roundabout. There's there's a lot of really good work that's being done. Moving up the uh, active transportation lane on the Hillsborough Bridge. All that is really welcomed by Stratford, and uh, and we really want to say thank you to uh, um, provincial government for that uh, for all that good work. Um, the other uh, item of interest is the uh, plaque unveiling at Tea Hill Park, uh, which marked uh, the. Um, what was it, the 90th anniversary. It, was, it took place on September 23rd, 1930, um, and um, um, 70, or yeah, 90th anniversary. And um, we, um, we unveiled the plaque to, uh, to mark that that's Canada's first transatlantic flight departed from Key Hill Park on that date, September 23rd, 1930. So it was quite a, it's quite a um, momentous occasion when you think about uh, the transatlantic flight uh, uh, by Charles Lindbergh had, had only taken place a short while before that, so it was quite an accomplishment for those uh, young aviators. And it took place right, right here, left right here from Stratford at Tea Hill Park. And I guess they got to stay here for four or five days because of the hospitality, right? Yes, yeah, right. it was great. Yeah. Yeah. So council was also at that uh, most Pretty well, everybody was there, so I thank you all for attending that, that event. Um, the other uh, item of interest that uh, highlight, I'd like to highlight is uh, the 100th birthday best wishes uh, and a frame certificate that I was uh, honored to present to Reverend Douglas Sharon, uh, 100 years old. So that's, uh, that gave me great pleasure to do that. 
Um, any comments or questions on anything else in my report? Mayor, I just was wondering if you could elaborate on the mayor's meeting. And I, I think I noticed that the Minister of Environment was there as well. Was she um, coming to you guys with something or? No, uh, she is um, uh, the Minister of the Environment, but she's also the minister responsible for the greater Charlottetown area, which includes Stratford and Cornwall. So uh, we, uh, I did have a, have a chance to uh, have a discussion with her and uh, she agreed to uh, to meet with uh, with myself and Robert uh, at a point in the future, in the near future, to uh, go over the issues uh, that we might have uh, that she could bring forward uh, on our behalf to uh, to cabinet and to the provincial government. So yeah, and uh, also the Minister of Communities and Fisheries was there, uh, Honorable Jamie Fox, and uh, so he um, he also was was there to hear concerns of municipalities in, in the capital area. Anything else you'd like to know about the mayor's meeting? I guess we, we talked about um, active transportation, um, the, um, the housing study uh, that's, uh, and I think uh, we'll be talking about that more tonight. The, um, um, yeah, we had a presentation by uh, Mitch Underhay uh, about um, active transportation in the whole area and how uh, there's a need to link it all together and they're working actively with uh, the municipalities to, to do that. Um, and we also talked about, um, um, reaffirmed our support for a regional wastewater utility to, uh, to ensure we have a seat at the table when um, decisions are being made around um, um, treatment of uh, our, uh, our wastewater. We also talked about the revenue sharing, um, and uh, I understand Robert, uh, our, our chief uh, administrative officer, Robert Hughes, will be discussing that more with his uh, with his update. Um, and we also had a brief discussion about uh, about crossing guards. So that was pretty well. It. Any other uh, questions on my report? I'd just like to mention, Your Worship, there is a, a, just expand on the uh, T Hill Park. Uh, as a result of that story being in the paper, I was approached by uh, an individual, David Moore in Charlottetown, who read the article, was pretty impressed with the whole thing, and uh, he asked if, if uh, the town would be interested in a painting that his uh, great uncle or aunt, I'm not sure what the, the relation is, but he asked me if I would be interested in taking a painting that uh, they used to farm T. Hill Park, and he's got a picture uh, of a horse and wagon pitching hay on it, the old way they used to do it, not like today. But he asked if I would be interested in taking that painting to the town and hang it somewhere we see fit within the town. So I did uh, take the painting. It's in Tanya's hands right now, and she's going to find a place, and I think she's going to bring it to one of the meetings and and discuss it, uh, Councillor Glanet or Art and Culture or whatever. But it was because of that story in the paper that he was really interested in. In fact, took a drive over to read the plaque and uh, thought that uh, the proper place for that painting is in the town somewhere. Oh, that's so great. That's spin a great off story. on that, yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. Um, I also had uh, was approached by um, um, someone who saw the story uh, on a Facebook, on my Facebook post, and uh, he works at the Canadian Aeronautics Museum in Ottawa and he's quite interested in the story and, uh, and doing some follow-up and, uh, and maybe putting something in the um, Canadian Aeronautical Museum in Ottawa about oh, it because it is, uh, it is quite an accomplishment. It's a major, yeah. you know, major milestone in Canadian aviation, yeah. uh, first transatlantic flight. Yep. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Okay, any other uh, comments or questions on my report? Okay, if not, we'll go to Chief Administrative Officer report. Robert Hughes, thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just on that last item, we do have the ability to issue a charitable tax receipt for the value of that for them, so it might be a bit of a help. We have to figure out how much it's worth, though. I'm not sure how we go about doing that, but I'll talk to Tanya about that just as a thank you for donating it uh, thing for them. Thank you. Um, my report's in your package. Uh, I'll just highlight a couple of items. Um, we have started trying to uh, figure out how we're going to implement the records management bylaw. 
Um, the, the, uh, the work that you did was great, but that's just the beginning of the work now, <laughs> is to actually get everything uh, filed properly. So we've engaged Julianne McEwen, and we're lucky to have a, uh, a subject matter expertise right here in our community to help us out with that. Um, so we've had a training session, a couple of training sessions, and we have another one scheduled for next week. Um, also, I, I met with the folks who are appointed and designated as their bylaw enforcement officers to officially um, designate them under the new bylaw and give them the bylaw ticket books. Um, we still have a couple of staff members who are interested in, uh, in that, but I have to get training for them so they understand how uh, to deal with evidence and uh, you know, what they legally need to know in order to be able to lay a charge, et cetera. But of course, the RCMP are named in the uh, bylaw as already being designated, so, but, but Glenn was here as well and we gave him uh, some of the ticket books that uh, we have so they're able to issue tickets under a new enforcement summary proceedings bylaw. You might wonder why it took a while um, after you passed the bylaw, but we had to actually order the ticket books. That's what takes, takes a, it's quite a period of time to get the books in um, that meet the uh, provincial court requirements. So that's done and our, our bylaw enforcement officers are now able to issue tickets uh, summary offense tickets. Um, we, as the mayor mentioned, uh, we, we started a discussion at the CAO level about revenue sharing. Uh, I'm going to bring Kim and or Jeremy into this uh, discussion this time as well. I'm not going to take the lead on it because I might not be here by the time they finish it. Um, I could be retired by then uh, if it goes on as long as it did last time anyway. Hopefully it won't. Uh, but we, ha we are starting that discussion because our agreement is up um, in a year and a half and that's, that's not that far away when you're talking about uh, negotiating a, an, ag an agreement like that. And um, we, we did apply and, and uh, were uh, approved for funding for a climate intern from UPEI. Um, we put an application in to have this person uh, work with us for six months to do two things. One is to look at our vulnerable infrastructure, particularly our lift stations that might be um, in a location that uh, sea level uh, could impact uh, when it rises. Uh, but the other one is to look at vulnerable properties. So individual residents who may have a home or a building on a property that could someday be uh, underwater or at least affected by uh, uh, storms and, and uh, flooding uh, whatnot. So, uh, so we'll have that person in play. Uh, remember when we had our session here last year, the province had produced a flood map and we were talking about how do we let residents know about that if they are somebody who could potentially be impacted by climate change. So that's what this in part is intended to address, uh, to identify them and to communicate with them uh, that they are vulnerable and, and identify things that they can do to address that. Uh, so, uh, so we have that uh, application approved and today I attended a meeting um, with uh, provincial housing and city of Charlottetown and town of Cornwall about the housing demand study. If you recall, we had kind of a, a process and, and approval to go ahead uh, the province was at that time uh, when we started this process a year ago looking at doing a provincial study um, but because of uh, changes in staffing at uh, more on the provincial land use planning side they don't have the support they need in-house to look at it provincially so we're just going to do a study for the capital area but the province is still going to be a partner they're still interested in finding out what the demand is for affordable housing for example uh, so they're still there as a financial and technical partner with us. Um, so we'll be putting together an RFP and hopefully within the next month or so have that out. Uh, but it'll be just for the capital region, um, which is good. It'll be focused on, on, on what our needs are and we'll get data specific to Stratford, which will help us to uh, figure out in our official plan uh, review. I know it's probably going to be a little behind on that and we have to have a conversation about how we fit that in. But, uh, but it'll be gr great information to have. Unfortunately, the folks who were um, on that project were reassigned um, because of COVID and they're just getting back to their regular duties now and that's why uh, we were held up. So that's my report, Your Worship. Happy to answer any questions anybody has. Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> in regards to your bylaw enforcement officers uh, in the Atlantic Police Academy training, uh, did you or is it possible to contact the RCMP and see if they can provide that service for the bylaw officer or do we have to go to the police academy for to that? To do the training, you mean? Yeah. 
Uh, I, didn't, I didn't do that, actually. I could reach out to the RCMP and see if they could do the training as well. I was trying to figure out what to do uh, because there is no set program in PEI right now. Uh, I found one in Ontario, but there's no set program. So I called uh, the province, the Attorney General's office, and asked them for recommendation, and they said, give the police academy a call and maybe they can help you out. So, but I can contact the RCMP to see if that's yeah, something that they can do. Open dialogue with them. And yep, I'll make a note of that. Question, Robert, is the CADC up and running again, eh, in the meetings? And uh, CADC has been running all along, but with a temporary board. They're not, uh, the new board has not been appointed yet. Um, at the Cavalry Mayor's meeting, we actually had that on the agenda, and they issued a communique after the meeting, and one of the items in the communique was to encourage the province to fill those seats because it's been a year yeah. since we made our appointment, and we would like to see the permanent board run. I'm actually not very comfortable um, being the interim board member because we're just dealing with day-to-day -day issues as they come up. We're not doing what a board is supposed to do, um, you know, long-term planning, supervision of the of the uh, general manager, that kind of stuff is really uh, not being done. So I, I'm hoping that very soon uh, we'll have uh, that board in place. I, did, I was contacted by a uh, provincial employee who was responsible for that file last year who was trying to get that up and running just to confirm our person is still uh, the right name. So that, that was good. That was like the day after we had the capital area mayor's meeting. So that, that might have helped to spur things along. Okay, thanks. Robert. Thank Yes. Robert, you have a line item here that you, you reviewed and assisted with an application for natural assets. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, there's that a element. there's a uh, organization. I think it's called Natural Assets Canada, um, and uh, but I'm not sure. But they have a, f a funding program out right now, and you recall that we have a program uh, in our in our work plan uh, to identify the natural assets in in a town and eventually preserve them. Uh, so it was just an opportunity to. Uh, whenever we see these things come across and say, okay, that's something that we're working on, so let's see if we can leverage some, some funding for it. So we just submitted it last week. I'm not sure to be successful or not, but they have some funding to help communities identify natural assets, so that's what it's for. Okay, and I'm sorry, did you say we applied for some funding? or Yes. Oh, we yeah. did, okay. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for your report. You're welcome. Okay. Um, We'll now uh, move to safety services. Uh, I'll ask uh, Chair um, Safety Services, uh, Councillor Derek Smith, to give his report. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we'll go over to the safety services meeting that we held on the 21st of September of this year. Um, the meeting was held by Zoom Technology. And the following agenda is for your pleasure in reading. I'd like to identify section 6A, which is the traffic calming measures. Um, this has come to our attention in a subdivision, and again, it has brought to our attention in regards to a the school area within Stratford. It is the uh, way we go about things now. Um, I want to point out that we have two representatives on our board, Mr. David Harris and Mr. Michael Ross, who are uh, somewhat experts in this field. Um, they gave their opinions on traffic calming, and the different types of traffic calmings, and the pros and cons of this. Uh, the biggest hurdle we are facing here is that we all know that the roads and streets belong to the Department of Highways and they would have to be the first that we consulted with this process. It is being worked on, uh, it's being looked at, and the people uh, are being recognized for their input into their concerns. All right. They're, they brought up stuff that I never would have thought of, but, and as well, points well taken. And other than that, we just updated the committee on uh, the previous six months and going forward what we're planning on doing. And that was pretty well it for that. Uh, questions? Councillor Smith, I just have a couple. <clears throat> um, first one is uh, the Glen Cove crosswalk looks like it's being looked at, and I think that's good. I drive that road quite a bit, and if there's ever kids waiting to cross, it's there. Um, so I think that's excellent that that's being addressed. Um, 
And then the second thing, um, and I guess it's just being looked at. It's not being set right now. I'm guessing that's why Jeremy's walking to the podium. <laughs> um, so that's one. Maybe if you want to comment on that, I guess I'll... Um, Maybe you want to just elaborate on the, that. Uh, second the Glen Cove. Uh, we'll just stick with the Glen Cove crosswalk right now. Okay, I'll let Jeremy take that one. Yeah, we've been uh, talking with the Department uh, of Transportation regarding the Glen Cove crosswalk. We have to put a, a small section of sidewalk on the other side of the road to connect with the uh, sidewalk that exists on Kepik, but we're looking for a little more direction from them, and um, they, haven't just, they haven't got that answer back yet. So. Most likely won't be this year, but uh, it'll be the first thing that we want to do next year. It's definitely been a request for quite some time, and, and we do see that it's an important thing to have that. So. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, lots of kids across there for sure. Um, and then the second thing is the permanent speed bumps on Rosebank was chatted about, um, potentially putting a permanent hump on Rosebank. And... I wasn't, haven't been around a long time, but I know there's history with landowners there, and I'm just wondering on how that consultation or how that process works if you do proceed to put a permanent speed hump on Rosebank. An excellent point, but we have found, I have found, that some people want speed bumps, and sometimes more people do not want them. So we should almost try to do a survey or put a sign up or something like this, permanent speed bump being considered for this area, and see what kind of feedback we get. Speed bumps do work, but some people don't like them. And uh, I guess we have to come right down to the safety of the issue. Uh, but uh, the speed bumps, we have uh, quite a few, but we could probably use more. But uh, I'll turn over to Jeremy on that one. The Rosebank uh, Road has been a, an issue for quite some time with, with speeding on there, and uh, we've had our, um, our, our speed humps that are movable uh, placed there for, for many years. They, they do make a little bit more noise when the vehicles go over top of the, those type of uh, speed hump, but um, we do feel that the Rosebank Road would be an excellent candidate for a permanent speed hump in there. Um, they're not nearly as noisy when we drive over top of them. Um, we have had three of them installed on Marion Drive for several years now, and we've had no complaints. Um, one had to be removed because of the new road that went in, but they do plan to put something back in place. Um, so we will do some consultation, but what I can say is two years ago, we, we were prepared to put the speed humps in. We did uh, send around our consultation uh, package. Uh, it, was, it was a letter sent out to the residents explaining where the speed humps would go and, and um, when they'd be installed and how long it would take. But we did get a little bit of op opposition, and, and at that, that time, council decided not to proceed uh, with the speed humps. So we will do some consultation again, but, I mean, we'll have to look closely at, uh, um, you know, what type of complaints are around the speed humps, and hopefully we can try to uh, remedy some of those complaints with uh, some of the people in the area. But there's some very strong um, uh, people that are requesting those speed humps every year uh, that have <coughs> small children, and uh, I think it will help to, to slow the traffic down. It's a it's a long straight stretch that that's downhill. It's very difficult not to speed when you're going down that road. You have to con consciously be on the brake. So uh, um, we'd like to look at probably several areas next year to put some permanent ones in, because the request for our, our uh, non-permanent speed humps has been just constant. And uh, as soon as we pull them out of an area. People are saying, what are you doing? Like, did they have to go back in there if it was really working? So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a time-consuming measure to, to move around, so we'd like to look at a more permanent measure. And uh, we do have the um, Department of Transportation that's given us guide guidance on how to install those, and they, they agree with uh, what we're trying to do. So um, hopefully we can get some more permanent ones put in next year. So does the Department of Transportation um, help you pick a location, like best location on the road for it? Or is that town staff? I, I don't know. I'm we, just wondering. We, we work together. To work together on that? The best location. Um, you know, there's certain distances from an intersection, and um, we try not to get them too close to a driveway. And, and there's, there's various uh, things that we have to look at before we do put them in, and we do consult with the province before we do that, the Kay. traffic engineer. No other questions. Um, I can okay. get some more uh, items to report. Yep. Uh, we'll move on to the RCMP report next. 
Uh, it's a pretty standard month again for the RCMP. Um, I would like to point out uh, in the last column the common police activities and the siege checks. There was 80 last month, which is up quite a bit. Uh, I understand that uh, these checks were mainly for uh, teachers and health professionals within our area getting their checks done. Um, they advised that hockey hasn't started yet, but when it starts, the hockey coaches will be going in, getting in to see checks done. So that's quite a big number uh, for the month. Um, of course, our tickets for the month were 25. Number of complaints within the community, 129. And uh, I reported last month about uh, an incident that we had in the subdivision in regards to an offense that we commonly refer to as car shopping. Um, I believe that investigation is still ongoing, Corporal, and uh, give us a little update on that one. Uh, yeah, regards to the car shopping or theft from vehicles, I, I am actually familiar with that investigation. Uh, just recently, as a result of that, we were able to lay charges of theft and possession of stolen property against two males and one female who are currently before the courts. Related to that investigation as well, we were actually able to lay some charges under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act against them as well. So. Yeah. Okay. So we have any more questions for the RCMP in regards to uh, our statistics sheet here we have for the month? All right, uh, if you want to stay there, we'll go over the, uh, the next one is the, uh, the mayor's report for the month. Uh, collisions, uh, locations are given for you guys. Uh, we have the ticket breakdowns uh, in regards to the number of tickets issued, the amount of money that has been uh, deemed coming towards the town, and other little things of interest. Uh, under the last page, under page four, are there other I want to bring to everybody's attention that along with their other duties, the RCMP have now been uh, deemed to be checking on people who are in self-isolation in regards to coronavirus. So you guys are also responsible to go on, uh, to houses and check on people, make sure that they're abiding by the 14-day uh, thing. Yeah, that's correct. So anytime someone enters the province outside the bubble where they should be self-isolating for the 14 days, there's a police file generated and sometime during that 14 day period we conduct a random check on that person by knocking on their door and checking to make sure that they're there. So you, you wouldn't even give them advance notice, you just go up That's knock correct. on the door and... It could be day one, it could be day 14 that we show up so it's somewhere in that 14 day okay. period. Yeah. So that's also another duty that you guys been given. Yeah. Okay, other than that, if you have any other questions for the RCMP officer, now would be time to question. Uh, I just have a comment. I'd just like to thank the RCMP uh, for these, uh, this new report. Uh, I think the, um, the map especially is a, gives a good indication of, you know, the coverage in the town and uh, the way that, uh, you know, we get, uh, we get coverage throughout the whole town. So I think that's, uh, that's really good. And um, all the information you provide is really good. And so thank you for, for everything you guys are doing to keep us safe. Appreciate it. You're welcome. The only other thing I quickly wanted to mention is for Halloween this year, which does fall on a Saturday. Um, we have been in touch with the citizens on patrol group and they're going to be actively out in the community that, that evening. And I think we have three members on night shift in Stratford alone that night. So there'll be lots of proactive patrols that that, that is an excellent point, and we'd like to remind residents, even on Halloween or any evening that you're walking, reflective vests go a long way for everybody. Um, I also like the map, is that uh, the map indicates all the locations that you are uh, at, and uh, the town of Stratford is well covered. You can see where the, although the Transcanal Highway is our main area, all the subdivisions and stuff seem to be looked at. Appreciate it. I have a question to Councillor Smith. Uh, I guess it's more towards uh, Councillor Glant. Um, the uh, total fine amounts 4,792. Are we actually getting that? Is, 
Are we getting that sent to us, that figure, or I is think Councillor Galanta, Councillor McDonald, McDonald. <laughs> but um, I know there was an issue there in the past. I'm just wondering if it's cleared up, then we are in fact getting the fines. Uh, perhaps I'll refer that to the finance director to see oh. if the exact amount that's showing on that report is what we get every month, or is there a variance due to the fact that some people don't pay their fines on time and that type of thing. The, the listing on the report, um, we have no idea when those people will actually pay their fines. It has to go through, it's all done through provincial, um, the provincial court. So those people are ticketed, so it just depends when they go and pay their fines to the provincial court, and then the provincial court would issue the funds to us for that ticket. Um, we've been asking the provincial court for information on our tickets for quite a long time. Yeah. Oh, it's been cleared up. But, but this is a great step forward because it allows us now to do a reconciliation at the end of the year between mm -hmm. what, what we've, we've tickets that have been issued and the tickets, uh, the, the amount of money that we're getting from the uh, Department of Justice. Uh, we, we had been getting this information from the RCMP for Okay, years, I had seen it before. That. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 Okay, thanks. Yeah. And I, I believe, uh, Robert, uh, you were saying we're in negotiations on this exact point now with the province? Um, no, we haven't had that discussion in a little while. I, I had on my work plan uh, for the last couple of years to chase them on a regular basis, but I haven't chased them since COVID started on this particular topic, so I can go okay. back and raise it with them again. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If not, I believe you have a couple of other. Yep, we'll move on to the Humane Society report. Um, as per every other month, the Humane Society is doing a great job. Um, I did notice today that there are three levels of enforcements that they try to conduct. Uh, when receiving a complaint, it's, it's investigated by an officer. Uh, they can either give a verbal warning, a written warning, and then a third, third time they can issue a summary ticket. Uh, that's the three levels. Of course, they tried to get everything resolved without the courts being taken into consideration. And that is basically the report for the month. Do we have any questions on Humane Society? I have a question. Okay. I'm just wondering if this, uh, these reports are, um, are put out in our public document. Uh, I noticed some names and that type of thing, They're, and addresses and emails are there, so perhaps that should be uh, more confidential. Yeah, I'm gonna re bring that up to the Humane Society and ask them not to include that or well, blacking out names and addresses. It's a, pr it's a privacy issue. Also, uh, Councillor Smith, uh, uh, this week a, a reading in the, the CBC News, uh, there's a unanimous donation of $1.1 million to the Humane Society and uh, animal abuse was down by 40%, so it's great news. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear. Good news. Also yeah, here the, the Prince County money. Hospital got a million dollars. What? Prince County Hospital got a donation well, of a million dollars. That's great. Well, it's good to see the Islanders giving yep. back to the communities. That's nice to see. Okay, uh, we have any more questions to Maine Society? We'll move on to the transit report. Uh, transit report is in your documents. Uh, the numbers have now reached 98. Uh, hopefully, we'll get over the 100 next month. Uh, but until the COVID thing is uh, done, uh, we get vaccinated because people are leery of getting into crowds, especially without face mask, and the ridership is going to be down. And people are working from home. But uh, the transit system file is still being worked on. We have not forgotten about the unserviced areas within the town of Stratford. They will be serviced someday, hopefully sooner than later. Questions on transit? Okay. Move on to the fire department. Uh, again, the report is in your uh, package. 
nothing really outstanding except for the one major fire that I'll be talking about here in a minute. Um, other than that, uh, it's been pretty steady. I have sent out an email to the town representative on the Crossroads Fire Department Board in regards to reapplying for their positions with on said board. Uh, it's every two years, we ask our volunteers to whether or not they want to stay on a board or be reassigned or move on. And that request has been sent out to our fire members on the board. Now we'll get down to the uh, apartment fire in Glen Stewart Drive. Uh, I want to bring to you the council's attention the apartment fire in Glen Stewart Drive, which happened last month. This was a major fire and there was a lot of property damage, a property loss. However, I'd like to point out some things about this for the record. Uh, although there was property loss, there were some good things that happened as a result of this fire. It appears the fire alarm was working. A residence of the building had the presence of mind to knock on everybody's door in addition to the alarm that sounded. Everybody should be made aware of fire hazards within their living space, things like lint in a dryer, uh, space heaters, etc. The crossroads fire ladder, the crossroads ladder truck was used to combat this fire. The truck allows the firefighters to get above the fire without going on the roof. Thus, it was safety for all those at the scene. I believe two other fire departments assisted with this fire. They were Charlottetown and Vernon River. I know we all want to thank them for their attention and their help. The opening of the new road, McKinnon Drive, allowed the residents of the area to have an exit point from the fire area. The distance between the buildings of the area allowed the fire to remain isolated to this building alone, thus saving other buildings from damage. This is another example of a major fire within our district, and again, the accident of the fire department was above and beyond. I hope and believe that the residents of the area appreciate the great dedication and expertise our fire department is doing within our town. And uh, for Mary at home, I do have a copy of this report for you, and it'll be in your box. So, we have any questions? Could you elaborate on number seven? Yeah, number seven, it seems to be that this day and age we want smaller lots and closer to, and with the building materials that we have now, vinyl siding, plywood, and chipboard, it's easier for these buildings to catch fire. And the closer the buildings are together, the more the fire can jump. So sometimes distance in between buildings can save a lot of damage. So that's the reason we put that in. And also, Councilor Smith, the number six, the opening of a new road there, McKinnon Drive. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Uh, Stratford at one time were many smaller subdivisions. These subdivisions are now being joined with other subdivisions and they're actually becoming development areas. Thus you have increased traffic and common measures. Um, it's the Department of Highways and the town of Stratford that any time a new subdivision is built, we have to look for a second exit point. For instance, if we had a closed area, closed subdivision, and there was a fire, the people of that area cannot get out of their subdivision because there's one road in and one road out. This is the reason we look at second exit points. I'd just like to uh, add my uh, comments to um, thanking the fire department for uh, their prompt action and um, um, getting that fire under control and um, protecting all the residents uh, in that area. So, uh, so thank you. I know we have a one person from the fire department here in attendance tonight. So, Kevin, thank you very much for, for all you do and all you did. Thanks. Actually, if Kevin, if you wanted to comment on anything with the fire, I think you were the, the lead on that fire. We are not? We are okay? Yes. Right. Kevin, I'd be interested in those points that you made, Derek, with regards to um, houses being closer together. Um, like building code would address a lot of that, would it not? And then um, as far as the second access point, like that is uh, <clears throat> within the DOT standards, they look at that, right? And that's how they 
have a maximum capacity before the second access is needed. Yeah. Kevin can elaborate on that. Just, just to quickly speak on the topic of distance <coughs> between buildings and materials, um, there is a um, building exposed building face calculation that's done on each uh, building that, based on the amount of open windows and whatnot that face the property line, um, there are limitations on how many openings there can be, and in some instances there has to be alternative materials that are not combustible um, if the if the structure is too close to a property line to ensure that the next building is protected. So that is a code-related thing that's checked on all permits. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Just, just one other thing that I neglected to mention in my comments. I also understand that the RCMP were um, present uh, during that fire and uh, provided a great deal of assistance. So I'd like to thank them for that yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. And that is my report. Thank you for your, your report, Councillor Smith. Any comments or questions? Thank you. And thank you, Corporal Lutley, for, for attending. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Um, now uh, we'll move to recreation, culture, and events. Um, Chair uh, Councillor Gallant. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, reports in front of everybody there for October. Um, Recreation Culture Events Committee, the Zoom meeting was held on September 24th. Agenda items include the, pl the plan for town center reopening, the 2020 capital update and 2020 capital planning, community campus and waterfront park updates and a preview of the 2020-21 programs. And as arts and culture we met and some of the stuff we went over in arts and culture was the, uh, you slipped down there, was the underpass, the mural RFP, I an mean, issue but unfortunately, no proposals were received. Funding had been endorsed by the Federal and Great Trail Program. Fortunately, the town will be able to reoffer the RFP in the spring, and the funding shall still be available. <clears throat> Two requests for proposals will soon be issued for the purchase of handmade indigenous musical instruments for the Stratford Elementary School and a public art piece for Pondside Park. The Stratford Youth and Center and Council. September was a great first month back at Stratford Youth Center, although the groups were smaller. Programs run each evening, providing an enriched environment for Stratford youth. This year, there are two of these councils, one for students in grades five to nine, and a second council for, st for students grades 10 to 12. The primary goal for the youth council is to create and oversee programs for youth, Stratford youth. The second objective is to establish fundraising programs for, the new, for their own program, but more importantly, help deliver community programs such as uh, sp uh, Spook, sp uh, Spooktober Fest and Christmas gift program of volunteer at num numerous town Stratford events, hosted events. Um, just move down here, my mouse. Uh, the town center gymnasium, the walking track and uh, fitness was officially, officially reopening. We opened on October 5th. New operating hours, reduced capacities in each area of facility, heightened cleaning program, six new staff hired, additional staff each day. Space and the fitness equipment, uh, and walking track only and walking only in one direction. 30 minute minimum be, be in gym programs and contact tracing for all guests at the front door. Um, down to our Stratford programs, so I know we're really busy. 109 people have registered for the Stratford Pickle, Pickleball program. The program is suspended to accommodate players being able to play three times over a five day period. So we accommodate them pretty good and additional evening program is being planned to encourage more residents to enjoy this great social sport. Co-ed volleyball and badminton recreation programs, the men recreational basketball has 16 registered participants. Let's get creative youth art. The town is partnered with Reactive Health PEI and Go PEI movement challenge for the month of October. Uh, with fall upon us, um, the winter ice program is once again the ever popular induction, just losing my mouse here. Um, the ever uh, with Fall Upon Us, Winter Ice Program has once again begun. The ever popular induction to hockey skills and drills program started on October 10th with 25 kids registered. This is a terrific program. I remember it's, it brings back great memories of my kids. Um, the program operates at the Pondless Sports Center on Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. Thank you to Coach Ross Burton and his volunteer team for leading this great program. He was able to secure program support from Chucky Sports Excellence while a participant Parents have offered supply skills and drills, decals for all players. 
Jumpstart uh, Love to Skate program registered on <clears throat> October 8th at midnight and was full by 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. Uh, unfortunately, the six-week program only has 25 participants. Stratch will explore opportunities to offer more programs like this. The fields, um, they're coming to a close there. As baseball, softball, and soft soccer programs wind up for a busy summer season, the town Stratford infrastructure team has begun closing fields. A program is a program of irritating or overseeding is underway as of October 14th. Only McNeil's fields remain open to public use. Baseball PI has initiated a fall ball, ball program in the island communities to extend baseball season. Uh, the events, um, Fall Fest originally planned for mid-October has been refocused with larger events not being printed, permitted at this time. The town is actively promoting the various trail networks from parks through social media to encourage residents to, to try get outside. And uh, active during the past great fall weather condition. So I'll just skipping down here. Christmas in the park, the past two uh, years. The cotton park shall be strict to a lighting ceremony, a butterfly garden. Uh, lights will be left on, until New Year's, New Year's Eve for everyone to enjoy the weekend. Acknowledgements to the town of Stratford, a couple of acknowledgements, acknowledgements here. The town of Stratford would like to extend sincere congratulations to several Stratford based softball and baseball teams on claiming provincial champions. Congratulations to the Stratford Steelers under 14 girls softball team, the Eastern Express Mosquito AAA and Pee Wee AAA teams, also, uh, who recently won provincial titles in, their in early September. Also, congratulations to our, our athletes of Stratford, our pro athletes from Stratford, Zach McCune, who signed a two-year contract with the Vancouver Canucks, and also Sarah Steele, who played hockey, a 24-year-old young lady. She, her husband's a good friend of mine, uh, played four years at Boston University, currently playing for Toronto Six of the National Women's Hockey League right now. So kudos to those both athletes uh, representing Stratford. Go Stratford. <laughs> Councillor Gallant, uh, Sarah is a, is a cousin of mine. Oh. I'm a steel on my mom's side. Oh, okay. Um, our rec department does a fantastic job here, and uh, but just some, some comments, um, and it's not our rec department that I'm commenting about directly, but it ties into our uh, community campus. Uh, I have four children enrolled in Pondle Minor Hockey this year. Um, I think the numbers are up to about 1,000. We practice Friday nights now, my oldest daughter, in Georgetown. Um, just to, uh, and we're certainly uh, on the same page when it comes to this, but we really need a, a facility here in Stratford. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we do. And uh, I hope uh, somebody will lead that charge here soon, sooner than later. I don't think our numbers are going down. Yep. Um, I think last year we were 800. Now we're at a thousand. Mm. Um, you know, projected growth for our community. Um, you know, if we stay at our current growth rate, I think in the next six, seven years, perhaps we'll be in fifteen thousand range. Yep. I may be corrected there, but uh, and these are a lot of young families. So we're really we've outgrown Pondal, which isn't in, in the town of Stratford, mm. um, but a great facility, and they do a great job. Exactly. And yeah. I really commend them for what they do there. But I think we could work collaboratively with Ponnell, and I really think we should start pushing for an arena or two here in uh, in the town of Stratford. I it's certainly long overdue. Yes, I certainly agree with that, and uh, I know hopefully our land purchase with the sports campus and and our school and so on, and we can facilitate that issue. And uh, definitely our population, our, our kids, their sports uh, with the Ponnell Hockey Association right now, uh, Councilor McDougall. Uh, the, a member of my boys registered it was eight hundred dollars. Now it's down to, I think hundred. I don't know what the number is, but it's very cheap, and uh, and it encourages young kids that couldn't afford it to play play hockey, right, and uh, play sports and stuff like that. With the Pondal Hockey Draw supplementing that that cost, right? Oh, most definitely. I, I was in the uh, um, six and change range to to register my four kids in hockey, and yeah. A friend who has two in the Sherwood minor hockey program was over a thousand, so they've done a wonderful job. And, and from that perspective, you're right. And yeah. it does entice more children to play, which is great. Yeah. Um, but again, perhaps collaboratively, we could work with Pondal, and uh, uh, we need uh, we need a couple more facilities, and we've outgrown them already. 
So. And me and you had discussions, Councillor, off the record, uh, the, with we're the only community in PEI without a hockey rink. When you look at it. Yeah, being the third largest community in the island and not having a rink when you, when you, when you look at it um, from that perspective. And, and yes, pretty near every community does, but yep. one the size of ours is certainly way, way, way overdue. Right. Yeah, and I think you have um, support of most members of council on your, on your statement there. Uh, I think the challenge will be uh, the consultation with residents and Robert and his, re um, our chief administrative officer, Robert Hughes, <clears throat> excuse me, in his report, he mentioned that we will be doing a consultation on our long range financial forecast with residents and that'll be one of the issues uh, that we'll ask residents to comment on is, um, you know, the importance of uh, um, a wellness center, uh, which will provide not only uh, a rink, but also um, things that would be of interest to uh, other parts of the demo of, of our population as well, um, seniors and, uh, and others. So it will be something I think that uh, hopefully residents will support and we'll be able to move forward with uh, before this term of council is, uh, is over. But I know in meetings with each of the councillors, uh, for the most part, uh, that was up near the top of the list. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll carry that forward. Uh, like you said though, uh, we do need uh, residents to step forward to champion this and uh, and and we do need um, you know support uh, at, from the provincial government uh, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, to make this happen uh, before too long uh, I would I'd like to point out also yes hockey is your main tenant but we have ring at figure skating oh public yeah skating oh yeah there's oh yeah early, there's there's a, there's a lot totally of agree yeah I think, it's a, I think it's a great question to ask in the survey. Uh, we seem to be asking the same questions on the survey, like how much do you make and how often do you work out? And, and I think uh, the question of are we ready for a rink in Stratford to get feedback from the residents? And, yeah, and, uh, I think that point is, is well taken. I, yeah. But I think the, um, the need to get an answer on it is, is going to, we take, we put our survey out usually in uh, January, February of each year. And I think we'd like to get this consultation done um, in the very near future. Um, is that not true, Robert? Uh, we're, we're looking at getting it out probably uh, within, a, within a month or so uh, to get an answer, uh, hopefully before Christmas or early in the new year so we can consider it as part of our budget deliberations. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think it's a great. I think it's a great budget question. Uh, not a budget. Well, it is a budget question too. But great to be on. Have that on the survey, and then have what the impact is. Sure. I, I looked at a, a survey from uh, out in Alberta this past week, and that was one of the questions. And uh, and what they did was they had three levels of uh, tax impacts. Like, do you want a, a rink, a small rink, or do you want a big one, or do you want two? And and and, and, and what they're what they're doing is they're telling the residents the impact it'll have on their taxes. Which didn't seem to be a whole lot when you when you no, look at it. Exactly. And uh, and you're not hiding anything. It's out in the open. And, and and get a response back from the residents, and then ask them to uh, to get involved. We have people in here that uh, might want to get involved in that project. Thank you. Yeah. You have comment. And I think uh, yeah, I think that's exactly our plan is yeah. to actually show that and break it down that way. Exactly how yeah. you described Alberta did it. That's yeah. our plan as well. Um, just I, I had a statistic poll. Jeremy got it for me. So there's a thousand kids in Pondal Island wide, 5,500. So we're w one in five. As far it's pretty high. Um, and then I think on Derek's point as well, the showing um, that our learn to skate or love to skate programs went off at midnight and it was full capacity sold out at nine o'clock the next morning shows that. There's definitely a demand, skills and drills. So is there a, with the 25, that's our capacity, is that due to coaching or is that due to, is that what it always was, was the capacity of 25? Yeah. Or is that, is that due to what can be on the ice at one time or coaching or where does that number come from? It's, uh, it's based on the uh, cohort groups that's allowed inside the rink. Kay. So there's a cohort group of 50, so you're looking at 25 kids on the ice with one adult come with them same time okay okay um, so other years it was higher that's correct okay um, and then the only other thing I was thinking um, 
I heard on Island Morning this morning um, a lot of your, just like we ran out of bicycles um, in the spring, a lot of outdoor recreation couldn't keep bikes in. Um, now we're seeing it with outdoor Chris, um, Christmas, winter sports, so skiing, cross-country skis, all this kind of thing, they're selling off the shelves. I know in Al they mentioned Alberta specifically, but I'm sure we'll see it here. Um, just wondering if there's consideration to outdoor or beefing up our outdoor sporting um, capacity um, in the town this winter with COVID mm. on. Um, I'm thinking, and especially with our gym at kind of, you know, a, a lower capacity, people are going to be forced outside um, and maybe embrace it a bit more. So outdoor rinks will be going up, obviously. I don't know if there's capacity for any more there. Um, and cross-country skiing, I think probably you'll see an increase in that this year. I don't know if we can trails or put some thought into that as far as groomed trails or any more snowshoeing, all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if there's been talks around the table as far as trying to beef up that way um, with the oncoming COVID winter upon us and maybe more demand. We have looked at different programs. Um, obviously, the two rinks are very popular. Uh, we'd love to add a third or a fourth rink. We just don't have the capacity right now. Um, if we were ever to get a water truck or something like that, that would be fantastic. Would would uh, make it a whole lot easier, similar to what Charlottetown does, and the truck moves around to seven or eight different locations okay. every evening. Uh, so hopefully that's something in the future that we could look at. In regards to other outdoor programs, uh, We've been in talks with Recreation PEI over grant for uh, cross-country skis. Uh, we already have a quantity of snowshoes that we, we can make available to the community. Uh, they can come into the gym and sign those out and go. Uh, part of the appeal of the uh, washroom facility out of Fullerton's is that there's a storage space out back. Exactly, uh, yeah. So that we can put uh, some equipment out there and uh, facilitate for groups to go out, uh, have access to that building and get snowshoes and, or skis if we are able to get those in the future and then return them to that location later in the day. Okay, mm perfect. I think there will be a higher demand for that this winter, absolutely. Um, and then the one other question I had um, is the, so we didn't get a respondent on the tunnel project, which no. is, that's disappointing. Yes, very disappointing. Um, so I see that there's um, an RFP going out for the Indigenous handmade instruments slash pond side art piece. Yes. So is that because there was no respondents on the tunnel? Exactly. So you're going to kind of put that on hold right. and try to get these two things off this year? Is that it's a replacement? Is that how is that's working? The Indigenous musical equipment uh, was something that was discussed last spring. Yeah. Uh, we reached out to a couple of different groups uh, within the Indigenous community about getting seeking funding and support. We weren't able to get that. Uh, there still is room within their budget to do that, so I think we can go back and do that safely within our operating budget. So that's uh, one piece that was uh, we wish we would have got done earlier, but by the time we got word back from those uh, groups. So that's operating budget, that's not that's the $15,000? No, that's or, okay. operating budget, it's going to okay. be roughly about $3,000, I believe. Okay. Um, in regards to the mural, um, each year the public art, there's $15,000 allocated to that, and that was what they wanted to do, was create that mural uh, down in the underpass to make it more appealing, more inviting. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get any local artists who were interested in or, or had the time, I guess, to put forth towards that project. Uh, so they kind of went to plan B, which is a public art piece for Pondside Park. Um, they have some ideas that, you know, the actual art piece perhaps could be set in the pond, but we'll have to work with the watershed group on that to see what we can do there. And uh, so they're just fine tuning the final details of that RFP and that'll go out. Um, in regards to the underpass, we originally applied for $25,000 funding on $0.50 cent dollars through the Trans-Canada Trail uh, funding program, the mm -hmm. Great Trail funding program. They came back and said, yes, you have it. Well, but unfortunately, we had to say we never got any uh, responses for our RFP. So they said, we'll defer that money till next spring. If you want to try it again, perhaps it might be the artists are strapped for time or busy with other projects. So we can re review that in the spring after Christmas at some point. 
Uh, they've allocated $5,000 towards putting some safety lighting under that underpass and putting a camera in there. So we'll move forward on that. Um, but they also mentioned there's other funding opportunities. Essentially, Stratford's been the only community thus far to apply for funding. Uh, so we'll look at other opportunities under that grant program for other areas of our, of our uh, Trans-Canada Trail that go through our town. Okay, thanks. So the pond side's kind of swapping in for the, for the yep. underpass until we get the underpass exactly. figured out. Okay, all right. The, the painting of the underpass was, was sort of, we had a lot of, a lot of ideas there, like mm -hmm. get the kids Stratford, the walls, uh, get the kids out and paint the walls. A lot of ideas come in that with just the weather and COVID restrictions, you know, how they painting and so on, and cold weather and so on. So we're, we're looking at uh, other ideas down the road. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so Glenn, uh, I have a question. I'm just wondering if you could give us an update on what's going to take place Remembrance Day this year. Well, um, I just I have a personal update, but go ahead, Jeremy. I was, I was looking at an update from Dr. Morrison, too, across the island, right? Yeah, so Remembrance Day fits in with the uh, the other events. It'll have to, would have to remain under 50. Um, actually, I was talking with a gentleman from the CPHO on yesterday morning in regards to Remembrance Day and that uh, I don't think they're actually encouraging them at this time. So we've looked at two, exploring two options. One would be to uh, conduct a ceremony in advance of Remembrance Day, record it, and then play it that day at 11 o'clock, kind of have a Remembrance Day service in a can type thing. Uh, something that we would look at would be to set up all the banners like we have in other years and record those, perhaps talk to a couple veterans or two and talk about the significance of the day and then air that out that day. But the other option that we're currently exploring is actually having a kind of a closed group service that day that we air out live, either on Facebook Live or some other social media streaming network. So uh, we're kind of exploring two options right now. Thank you. I'd love to give you an answer, but we just don't have one right yeah, now. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a couple of points. Um, apparently, Mr. Ryan Bradley uh, set up a bicycle tour. I don't know if that was last month or this month, but you had in incidents on your emails there. That's muchly appreciated to see people on their bicycles getting exercise. Uh, last Friday, we planted some uh, fruit trees down in Fullerton's Marsh. It was surprising to see how many people actually are walking those trails. There was quite a few walking past the trails on that day. Yes. Uh, Remembrance Day is covered off, and I don't know if you guys, Maddie Crawl, is she in your department or is she with another department? She's on everybody's team here. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> I just I just wanted to thank her for organizing yes. it. It was well organized, and uh, she had everything planned, and it went off really smoothly, so she did a great job for us. Yeah. Thank you. Great to see that orchard area develop when you get yes. down the road, right? Just in, re sorry, just in regards to the... Uh, the bike ride, uh, it was our second year as part of Fall Fest. Uh, as you know, Fall Fest has obviously changed this year. It was a great success last year. Um, so we've been encouraging for people to get out and see our parks and see our trails and that sort of thing. But the bike ride, which was led by uh, Ryan Bradley, was part of our active uh, transportation committee. It's the second year he and his wife and Jeff Murray, the PI bike guy, have come. Uh, they do free tune-ups, bike tune-ups for kids. And anybody who attends a bike ride, there's probably 25 to 30 people there. 12-kilometer uh, bike ride. We had everywhere from five-year-olds to my age, 45-year-olds, and so it was a great turnout. It was a windy day, but uh, everybody had smiles on their faces when they got back and sore legs. Mm. And just just as a shout out, the the walkers I talked to last Friday referred to this trail system as a hidden gem. So I would encourage anybody within Stratford if you want to go for a nice walk, try the Fulton's Marsh. It's yeah. really pretty now. Should I just add something, Steve? Uh, Certainly, yeah. I just got a report in there from Dwayne. Sorry, the youth center. I want to bring up the youth because the youth are very important to our community and, and Cotton Park and so on. Um, many new COVID restrictions in place, including masks required when social distancing were not possible. We, we have divided youth members into three groups, grades 5 to 6, grades 7 to 8, 9 to 12. Each group will allow only 20 registrations a maximum. The new maximum capacity for the youth center would be 20 people down Cotton Park. The youth center has five casual staff hired. Extensive cleaning and sanitizing will take place before, before and during and after all the, all the programs. Currently, we have 48 youth members registered uh, 13 in grade five to six, 16 in grade seven to eight, and 19 in grades nine to 12. Very encouraging. 
Um, the current programs that are running, drop-in programs, Youth Council Junior, Youth Council Newspaper Club, Dungeons and Dragons Club, and the Movie Days. The Drama Club has started on October 1st, and the Youth Council and Junior Youth Council is currently planning an alternative, op alternative options for the Youth Center for Spoke, spoke to Toberfest event in October. So I just wanted to add that because the, the youth and uh, Dwayne and, uh, and my support team there, Rachel and Tanya and Jeremy, the lead there. So it's, it's, it's great to be working with all these people. Thank you. Yeah. And that's one thing I'd like to comment on is uh, the youth. Uh, really good to see them uh, involved in different uh, activities like that. Yeah. And uh, I really value their input on, uh, on town issues that affect youth. Uh, I'd love to see a, a more structured way of getting that, uh, that input uh, yeah. through the youth council. Um, and if there are issues that are, you know, that affect uh, our, um, our regulations or our, um, the, you know, the, the legislation that we have uh, as part of our, our town's yes. uh, rules and that sort of thing, it would be good to have their input on things that they'd like to see and, and, and things that they'd like in terms of infrastructure, uh, what they'd like to, uh, to see in our town. So. Yes. Okay, with that, uh, thank you for your report. No Council problem. Glenn. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, now move to science, uh, finance, and technology. Uh, Councillor McDonald, thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so we had a, a Zoom meeting uh, in the month of September. That report is in your package. If anyone has any questions about it, uh, I'll highlight a few uh, things that the uh, department is currently working on. Uh, the auditors have completed their audit work, uh, so the draft statements will be coming to us uh, shortly. Uh, this is the first year with this new company, so um, there's a bit of a learning curve while the audit team becomes familiar with our municipality. Uh, the CWWF uh, claims are being completed. Uh, staff are finalizing the MCEG grant information, uh, and also ICIP claims are being completed as well. The October utility bi billing is being processed. The due date on the bills is going to be November 13th. Uh, electronic bills are already in people's hands, and the mailed-out bills should reach customers uh, by tomorrow. Uh, the letter has been sent out to utility customers to inform them that the waiving of interest is finished as of November 13th, and we'll go be going forward um, towards disconnecting on delinquent accounts. Uh, we're waiting to hear back from Provincial Infrastructure on the rollout of the next phase of Investing in Canada program. Uh, we reviewed the long-term forecast scenario with the management team to prepare for the uh, uh, future survey that's going to be sent out to residents. The management team is also working on a forecast to the, uh, to, to, until the end of the year of the 2020 budget to take into consideration COVID-related losses in revenue and changes to expenses. This report will be going to the Finance Committee this month and to COW at the uh, Committee of the Whole at the end of this month. We're still waiting to hear uh, back from the province on the rollout of funding for municipalities to cover losses due to COVID. Uh, our capital project work uh, spreadsheets have been updated, and uh, staff are also working on the asset management inventory to prepare for the introduction of the town suite asset management module. Also, the uh, financial statements for the month of September are in your package for the town as well as the utility. Uh, for town, we are down uh, a little over, um, close to 5% actually for revenue, and our expenses, however, are down 14.4%. Um, if there's any specific questions, uh, myself or the Director of Finance can answer. That's my report, Your Worship. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions for Council Councillor McDonald? I just noticed on the, and maybe I'm reading this wrong, but the utility, um, it looks like the water, the budgeted water meter readings are lower than what we expected. And uh, I'm just wondering, um, how often do they read those meters? Like how, Gail and I actually talked about this ahead of the meeting, but um, we're just wondering, um, yeah, how accurate is that and how far off are we actually? I know there's, but there looks like a significant um, gap there right now. What it is, it's just a timing issue. The the meter bills didn't get done till October, so you'll okay. see that it'll bounce right back. Okay. Whenever we do the financial statements at the end of October. Okay. I was wondering that. Okay. Yeah. 
Perfect. That's all I have, Gail. So we're looking at both the uh, utility and the town are both seem to be in pretty good financial condition? Uh, not too bad, considering. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on financial report? Okay. Okay. Okay, if not, uh, we'll move on to planning, development, heritage. Um, ask Chair Councillor Jill Burridge to give a report. We took up a lot of real estate the last few meetings, so tonight I'm uh, pretty short and sweet. We did not meet this month. <clears throat> we didn't have any applicants, <coughs> applications or anything in front of us, so we decided to take this month off. Um, there is the permit summary in there, um, if anyone has any questions. Um, Outside that, um, we did meet, um, I did talk earlier in, in previous meetings about a debrief. Um, uh, the mayor, the CAO, um, director of planning, and myself did meet briefly to talk and have a bit of a debrief on the last few decisions and, and uh, developments that came through. Um, and we are going to research um, planning processes and how we can maybe do things a little differently that, uh, um, might work for everyone a little bit better. So we are just in, in initial thoughts on that right now. Um, and that'll be discussed further as we move along, Committee of the Whole and, and Planning Committee. So um, I think it's a good um, exercise to work through, so. Councillor Bjorich, uh, on your um, development permit summary. Mm -hmm. I've been here, I think, around 15, 16 years on, on council and never had a street named after me. <laughs> but I see on here um, we have 25 Darren McDougal Drive. <laughs> How did he wrangle that? <laughs> Where you look, do you see that? If you that? look under fences. Uh, really? Look under <laughs> fences. It says. Uh, it's on the uh, top of page two there. That is so funny. That's pretty good. He, he did all right there. Darren McDougal Drive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's official. That's not, yep. <laughs> did all right, Darren. Doing good, buddy. Doing a good job. I'm keeping an eye on it. Hey, and we're keeping an eye on that. <laughs> no, no, 15 Jeez. years, got nothing. Never wow. got a dinner. Never even got a dinner. The <laughs> forgotten uh, counselor. Do you have yeah. a sharp eye there? Uh, Darren yeah, McDougall. Oh, that's well. hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, there is a couple of big developments in there. <clears throat> um, there's uh, townhouses there. The uh, Rita Gary Lane or Jerry Lane. That's over in um, Southside Greens. Um, that's the townhouse. They're doing, putting some townhouses in there. Well, where, where yeah. is that on Stratford Road there? Um, that is over off Stratford Road, like Stratford and uh, yeah. Kinlock in the Southside Greens area there, out back. There's oh, okay. townhouses yeah. going in there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, is it is it uh, gospel that uh, Taco Boys are coming here? I see it I, all Well, over. I think yeah, I saw it on Facebook, so it's it must be true. Facebook. It must be true. Yeah, it's all over Facebook. What's that? I'm very excited about Taco Boys. I'm it, a big fan. Uh, I looked at their menu. It looks good. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a very positive uh, report. Uh, look, especially in, um, when you look at single family, um, both for September uh, 2019 and, and this year, um, we're up significantly. And also, uh, even the year over year, uh, in terms of single family, uh, we're up uh, uh, very uh, substantially. So those are. Those are great, uh, great signals for our town that we're we are moving ahead. A lot of people are choosing Stratford to uh, to locate uh, to you know to settle their families, and uh, and that's good good news for the future. So hopefully um, we'll um, be able to catch up um, on the year over year. I know last year was a significant year with regard to uh, development uh, because of a number of big projects that moved forward, but um, hopefully we'll. We'll move, keep moving forward as we are now. So, any any other comments or questions uh, for Councillor Burridge? 
No, they're, like the real estate in Stratford, I mean, up street a couple of houses were gone in two days, so it's, the people are coming in and going out and try, you know, it's, uh, it's still busy. Uh, people, the homes are selling and, and new, new residents are coming to Stratford, so it's great to see that part. And this the infrastructure probably a little, we have to bring it up a little bit and, you know, and uh, look at that way, so. Yeah, with all that growth that you see on there comes responsibilities as far as the town, you know, we have more people to serve and, and, exactly. and uh, more infrastructure um, being brought on. So um, that's, that's the key to the planning portfolio, I guess, is to look down, down the road and yep. see what's coming. Okay, thank you for your report, Councillor Burridge. Um, any other comments or questions? If not, we'll move to infrastructure. Thank you, Your uh, Worship. Deputy Mayor Clo. Thank you. Um, the report in your package and also the minutes of our September 15th meeting. We had a Zoom meeting there. We'll all go through the uh, memo. The wastewater treatment plant update, the system continues to function well. Uh, the wastewater collection system to Charlottetown, both the pump station construction and the pipe work installation are in the final phases. The contractors are busy with the final task, but have encountered some delays with material and subcontractor scheduling. It is now expected to be November before commissioning of the system takes place, preceded by the decommissioning of the treatment treatment plant. So, so now we're into no, November because of uh, some issues there with contractors. Uh, the inflow infiltration reduction uh, strategy quotes have been received for additional work on the system. This work should begin in the coming weeks and be finished before the end of the year. I'm happy to say that we did receive four bids on that and it has been awarded and it will be started sooner than later, I'd say. Investing in Canada infrastructure programs, the sword lift station upgrades, the infrastructure department has given Coles the direction to proceed with the finalizing of the design of having the Corey's pump station diverted to the sewer trunk main. Coles will prepare a probable cost of construction, which the department will use to determine how the project can be phased and funded, as the cost is expected to exceed the current funded amount through the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Plan. And the water station upgrades are currently reviewing, we are currently reviewing the tender packages for the upgrade to the well pump, pumps, controls, and interior piping at Pond Side Station as well as lightning and surge protection added to cable heights, Fullertons, and Pondside Station. This is intended to be tendered before the end of the month with construction to begin soon thereafter. The Provincial Active Transportation Fund, the Georgetown Road Sidewalk and Bicycle Lane Extension Project has been awarded to Island, Island Coastal Service in the amount of uh, 598720 plus HST, Island Coastal Services are expected to begin construction this week and be completed by the end of November. And I have a resolution to this effect coming up. And what was interesting, I, I was over there and I was, um, I thought it would have already been started, but they were having trouble getting flaggers, believe it or not. Uh, I guess you just can't hire anyone. There's a course that goes with that. But they tell me, which is sort of interesting, that they're using robots for flaggers. And it's interesting that they have a, a lad in the car or whatever. And it's, it, he controls the buttons at each end, whether you go red, green, or whatever. So, so that could be the future. I don't, I'm not sure, but it was the first time I've heard about that. I'm sure, Jeremy, you have heard about that. And, and, uh, oh, is that right? Okay, so I was, uh, I'm on up on you. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that was interesting because they're using robots, you know, so. Um, technology, the, yeah. Pardon? Technology. Yeah, it's yeah. all technology. Yeah. Fullerton's washroom facilities, uh, deficiencies have been identified and are being addressed by the contractor. The completion of the project is, is expected uh, by the end of the month. And the natural playground in Fullerton's, uh, the site meeting will be held with Culpequit Trails Consulting this week to finalize the project. And in addition uh, of the above, the infrastructure staff are busy with on site lead premises, inspections, enforcements, sewers and water inspections, trail grooming, sports fields, 
and the staff are, are starting to plan for the upcoming changes in the, se in the season as fall transitions into winter. So believe it or not, staff will also be busy getting uh, the Christmas decorations inspected and ready to be installed. So we're almost there. Mm -hmm. So during the months of September, there were no major issues with our water distribution or wastewater collection system. So that's the report. I'm sure if there's any questions, if I can't answer them, Jeremy can, so. It's good to see the um, work going ahead with the cenotaph. Is that under infrastructure, is that recreation? Uh, yes, that's, I believe it's recreation, but, pardon? Heritage, heritage yes, heritage. it's under heritage. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, and I think um, uh, down at the bridge there, the contractor, the Earthform, Earthform, I believe, had the contract for that, and uh, they've been busy there all week, and hopefully, yeah, it's, it's going to be beautiful when it's all done. So Okay, so the, um, the input we're looking for on the waterfront um, when the lagoons are um, decommissioned, is that, is that under infrastructure? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're looking for input. Uh, there's a, a number of uh, the consultants are looking for, yeah. for input on that, so I'd really yeah. encourage people to... Uh, um, through the link uh, with the consulting that's right. group that's doing the study to uh, provide their input to uh, to that because I think that's going to be a, a gem. That, yep. That's something we only get one chance at yep. and uh, we want to make sure we do it right yep. and uh, uh, it'll be a beautiful, whatever it ends up doing, we do there is going to end up being uh, pretty well the, the front, uh, as, as uh, Councillor Burridge said to me, it's going to be like the front porch of our town. Yep. So uh, it's, a, it's the first thing people are going to see when they, yeah when they come into our town. So yeah. it's really important that we get good input, to good yeah. ideas, and, uh, and we do the best we can to make that uh, yeah. as attractive and as functional as possible. Yeah. And, and I guess, and Jeremy, correct me, but I'll just say that I'm, uh, uh, the sludge will be going into those black bags that are there. And uh, my understanding is, is that uh, uh, once we get that decommissioned, it, it all depends what's going in that area on how we fill it in because if we're looking at a, uh, a structure to go there then the infilling would have to be different than it was just going to probably be just a straight grass or green area you know so you can you can talk about that yeah the only thing i'll, I'll say to that is um you know our partner charlottetown we are looking at maybe sending some of that sludge directly to the plant they do have the uh, the ability to process some of that so um, <clears throat> that might be a more cost-effective and uh, better way to, to resolve that, that issue. That's the only difference. But. So I guess the question I have, and I probably should know the answer, but because of that, would the cost be down With regard for decommissioning? Um, I wouldn't say they'll be down. Uh, we have $500,000 for the decommissioning of the, of the system, and uh, we haven't got that, price, that portion priced out yet. Um, it, it may assist a little bit, but um, you know that that estimate was quite some time ago. So it'll be interesting to see what the tender comes in to actually decommission the facility. So not sure if there will be money left over or not. Any other comments or questions? I just I'll, I'll just for benefit. We've already had this conversation, Jeremy, but. Um, the breakdown in the resolution. So yeah, the the funding that we got from the provincial um, active transportation is in the amount of two hundred and sixty one eight, right? Correct. Which is significant towards this project because it was a big ticket item. So to get that funding was uh, a really nice bonus. Um, so again, it's kudos to the province for being able to allot this money towards these types of projects because that's considerable sure. um, considering what that project is worth. And the good thing about that is it's over a, a five year period so there'll be other projects yeah. that we can uh, you know, tap into that funding so it's, it's, uh, it's gonna go a long way. So the Georgetown piece will, <clears throat> we're gonna be doing a resolution on it. it it'll be finishing up this year. Um, it will take, we did a lot, a million over, I think, two years, right? So 500,000 this year and 500,000 next year. So the KEPIC thing will be happening next year, the KEPIC, KEPIC act, yep. multi-use active transportation trail, mouthful. Okay. And that's just for the benefit of whoever's still watching. Okay, we will uh, be having a resolution later, but are there any other questions on the, um, on the report?
Just, uh, Jeremy, I don't know if you can answer. Are you the province, uh, the active transfer trace and trail on the bridge, you know when that's going to be com started and completed? I know there's on it now, but you know when it's going to be com completed? They plan to have it completed uh, before uh, December 31st. Now okay. Home. December 31st? Yeah. Okay. That's what I understand. Now, yeah. we do have a meeting with them uh, next Wednesday to go over the project a little bit further. So okay. Myself and Jeannie will be attending that meeting, and uh, I should have some further information to report to Council after that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Is there no other questions, then uh, we'll proceed to the resolution. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank resolution you. number INC 003-2020, Georgetown Road Sidewalk and Bicycle Lane Extension. Whereas the Georgetown Road Sidewalk and Bicycle Lane Extension construction tender closed on September 17, 2020, and whereas the following tenders were received, HST included. Island Coastal Service Limited, 688528 Birch Hill Construction Limited, 1908803 And whereas a capital budget of $1 million was approved for the construction of active transportation path and sidewalk, and whereas funding through the province of Prince Edward Island Sustainable Transportation Action Plan in the amount of $261,799.75 will be contributed towards the project. And, was, and whereas engineer, engineering design, construction services, and project testing fees were 36,512.50, HSD included. And whereas the total price of the project is $725,040.50, HSD included. Be it resolved that the award of the tender to Island Construction Island Coastal Service Limited in the amount of $688,523, HSD included, be confirmed. This resolution bears the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole Council based on a meeting held on September 23, 2020. So moved. just want to clarify, 688-528, eh? 688-528. Six six hundred and eighty-eight thousand five hundred twenty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll second that motion. Okay. Discussion. Any comments or questions on this uh, motion? Just more curious than anything, <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> how is there such an enormous gap between those two tender prices? How, how does that happen? Do they were they looking at the same thing? <laughs> uh, I would say that one contractor was very. Uh, anxious to get the work and, and uh, one contractor probably had more work on than they expected but still put a price in um, and we only had two bids so uh, you know we we didn't hear anything back from Island Coastal with regard to uh, the issue with the price so uh, I feel it is a, a good price and uh, they are able to cl complete the work and they're, go they're going ahead we do see that from time to time it's Sometimes unfortunate for the, the contractor that's low priced to see that amount of money left on the table, but uh, that does happen from time to time, these type of projects. I think that's yeah, the beauty thanks. of the tendering process is that uh, uh, contractors know if there's more than one, if they're not the only one bidding. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that really enters into it. And we've had situations where we've, we've only had one bidder and we've paid, you know, we, or the bid has been substantially more. And uh, in this case, there were two bidders, and uh, neither one knew what the other one was bidding. So it's uh, it's always very competitive, and it's good to um, it's good for the taxpayers to uh, to keep that uh, price as low as it possibly can be. Certainly, you know, it's to our advantage to have the competitive process the way it is. And you know, yeah. in this case, it uh, it came out very close to uh, to what the uh, the budgeted amount was. It was lower, but uh, still, it was it was quite close to what Coles came up with the estimate. So. We're comfortable with uh, what they're going to do. Yeah, that sounds good. It's good for us. Yeah. By the looks of the way Birchill priced it, I'd say we got ourselves a good deal. <laughs> we a deal with, with yeah. Island Coastal. Yeah. Um, speaking of the future, th this piece of road is now is going to be done. The other piece should be done next year. Is that pretty well the major roads done for us in the town? We can start looking at different subdivisions now, maybe. Yes, the plan we had in place for, for several years, uh, back as far as probably 2007, it will now be complete, or hopefully be complete next year if the pricing goes right on the multi-use path on Keppick Road. And that'll, that'll allow us to start looking at some of the subdivision areas and maybe even sections like Rosebank Road or some of the longer roads that 
that do have, you know, some somewhat of a speeding problem where if you put sidewalks in, it, it seems to alleviate yeah. those, those issues. Uh, Ducks Landing, some of our higher density areas, uh, we're also going to look at. So we'll be coming up with a new plan once this one's been completed and uh, start to uh, try to get that done. The, the one thing I think that's really um, um, sort of uh, opened my eyes is the idea of a multi-use trail is, uh, you know, a paved multi-use trail it seems to be more functional from a, from a use perspective. Uh, cyclists, pedestrians, walkers, you know, like everybody can, uh, can use the, uh, use it as opposed to just a sidewalk. I know the, the economics might not work as well in terms of long-term maintenance and that sort of thing. Disabilities too, Steve? Uh, yeah, people, yeah. yeah, people with, uh, in, with yeah. In wheelchairs or, or walkers or whatever. It's yes. better for them to. Yeah, uh, everything from walkers, cyclists, and runners, they all, they all do like the paved uh, multi-use paths. And uh, you're right, uh, they may require a little bit more maintenance over time, but they are less uh, expensive to build um, during the construction point too, so. It seems to be the way that things are going now, and, and it, uh, they're a safer way to, to have uh, pedestrians and, and cyclists uh, move together. Yeah, it'll be really good to be in a position where we can, as a council, look at uh, you know some recommendations from staff about uh, you know on a sort of a uh, an objective way what the most where the greatest need is for uh, protecting uh, you know providing a multi-use trail uh, to protect pedestrians, separate pedestrians from and cyclists from uh, road traffic, vehicular traffic. Look forward to that. Sure. Any other comments or questions on? Uh, uh, I, b I believe the town of Stratford with our trail system, but isn't the provincial government going to start joining our trail system to the out outlying areas? Like I know they, they plan on trying to put a, a path right down the Palmer Rink. I is that correct? Uh, well, my understanding is they're they're uh, widening the shoulders there to make sure that there's adequate space for cyclists to go along there, which will then join on to our bike paths that we have uh, along the Keppock Road and, and other areas. So they're they're moving towards that. I don't think it's a multi-use path that's going to be constructed at this point, but definitely they're they're widening a lot of the roads uh, in the eastern part and all over the island actually uh, to allow for for greater area for cyclists to, to have a little more safety on the side of the road. That's an excellent, excellent initiative. Yep. Okay, we have a resolution on the floor. Any other comments or questions on the resolution? If not, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion my, carried. Oh, sorry. No, that's my report. Your oh, report. thank you. Okay, we'll now move on to Committee of the Whole. Um, we had a special Committee of the Whole on September 8th. Um, 2020, the minutes are before you. Um, and we have a resolution um, with regard to results matter. Uh, maybe I'll ask uh, Deputy Mayor Clo to read that resolution. Your Worship. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Your Worship, I just have a comment about the uh, minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, just on page three there, it says that I had asked if the Recreation Department considered opening the fitness center. I might have asked a question about uh, with regard to cleaning the fitness center. So I just like that uh, uh, modified there with the uh, minutes. Okay, we'll ask that amendment to okay. be made. Thank you. Yeah, these. Okay, thank you. These are just for information. Or okay, uh, thanks. For our, your report. Perfect. Yeah, but uh, thank you for clarifying no, that. No worries. Okay, um, there is a resolution um, which I'll ask Deputy Mayor Clo to read. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, CW 008 2020 Results Matter Strategy Plan Approval. Whereas Stratford developed a strategy performance management plan by blending the town's sustainable vision and the balanced scorecard process, and whereas each council renews and updates the plan to reflect their priorities. Whereas the plan contains strategy objectives, initiatives, and performance measures to guide the work of the organizations over the next few years. Be it resolved that the attached results matter strategy performance management plan be hereby approved. This resolution bears the recommendation of a committee of the whole council meeting held on September 23rd, 2020. So moved. Is there a seconder? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, any... Uh Comments? Uh, you, do you want to make a few uh, comments on this uh, 
I would like to just point out, Your Worship, um, to residents, they might wonder why the plan is being approved two years after Council was elected. Um, Council actually did uh, have strategic planning sessions early on, and we've been working with this plan for uh, quite a while now and implementing the recommendations in it. It's just we were working on getting the KPIs identified and updated um, in order to complete the plan and have it approved by Council. So I just didn't want residents to think that uh, we're doing a plan two years into the mandate. We've been working on it, uh, working on the objectives in the plan and the initiatives for quite some time now. And KPIs are key performance indicators. That's yes, what we use sorry. to track progress against the, against the plan. Yes, we're trying to measure, um, are we getting the outcome that we uh, set out for ourselves when we start out? And this was uh, sent out uh, for input um, to residents uh, uh, um, a while back, eh? Yes, in yeah. the spring we put it on uh, the website and we issued it on social media. We didn't get any comments. It tends to be one of those high-level dry things I think that people don't uh, kind of cotton on to, but, but we did put it out for comment. But it does outline the um, priorities of, uh, of this council in terms of our overall strategic plan. Yes, that's correct. For what's important to, uh, to get done. Yes. Yeah. Um, Your Worship, if I might, while I'm on the floor, save me getting up again later, just want to remind Council that the November meeting and the members of the public, November meeting is going to be on the 12th at 4.30 because the 11th is, is uh, Wednesday. So it'll be on Thursday the 12th, not Wednesday the, the 11th. Um, uh, we passed a resolution to that effect last year, but just to remind people. Okay, thank you. Okay, the, any time, other? the time will be 4.30. Yep. It's just regular Council time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, any other comments or questions on the resolution? Uh, we've got a mover and a seconder. Um, no other comments, so I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary-minded? Motion carried. Okay, we'll now um, ask Councilor Darren McDougall, Chair of Sustainability, to give his report. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, our committee met on October the 7th um, I'd like to start by uh, thanking Joe White. Uh, he has uh, left his position within our committee. Um, he was a good, great contributor, Joe. He's a businessman here in our community. He offered a lot to the committee, and he offers a lot to the community, and I wish him the best. He'll likely get involved in some capacity, whether it be with the uh, different business uh, initiatives that we have or whatnot. Uh, uh, but Joe was a great contributor, and again, I, I wish Joe the best. Um, former Mayor Kevin Jenkins, uh, I'd like to offer condolences. He, he lost his mom here um, recently, so my condolences to Kevin and his family. <clears throat> now, uh, business uh, in our sustainability um, committee meeting. Um, Wendy started the conversation uh, and discussion uh, about uh, the business community and working with our consultant AOR um, in the communications to help with us. Uh, they will be leading a virtual coffee chat on October the 15th from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m. with the hope that uh, it will attract some of the members of our business community. Purpose, uh, bring the bring the members, bring together the members of the business community for a discussion with, with each other about the current needs and challenges, as well as talking about opportunities and ideas, which can be shared, brainstormed uh, with the Think Stratford mandate. Um, we're hoping that this gives us a, a bit of a stepping stone as the business group has been uh, quiet as of late, and uh, we want to remind the business community that we are here and we are trying to uh, work on their behalf. We um, continued our discussion, uh, the economic sustainability report, um, and uh, you'll see uh, we, uh, in October, we'll see us do a, a business scavenger hunt. Um, we can get any interaction, so with an attempt to get interaction between the businesses and our residents. Uh, five businesses will be featured each day with visual clues being provided to let residents guess what businesses it is 
along with some word clues, and residents will submit their answers to win a prize. The idea is to uh, run the scavenger hunt for four weeks uh, and allow us to feature 10 businesses. If it goes well, we may uh, try it a few more times this year. Uh, we moved on to a discussion about the business park, phase three. That discussion was led by our CAO, Robert Hughes. Uh, we're in a great position. Um, the fact that our business park, as it currently exists, is sold out, so it's a, it's a nice problem for us to have as uh, not having any more commercial space left but <clears throat> we uh, we had a discussion it wasn't to to come up with a conclusion as to what we're going to do with uh, space that exists within our business park currently where the soccer fields are located so uh, CAOUs presented it with a, presented us with a few options to consider um, one, uh, and, and ultimately we, we uh, as part of that discussion, um, being aware that the community campus is yet to be completed, so uh, ultimately had a discussion about what options we, we preferred, uh, uh, but with the understanding that uh, no decisions will be made until we have some decisions made regarding the community campus and how that land will be situated and structured. So. So we had a, a discussion about that and, and gave uh, CAO, 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 CAO use some guidance in that regard. We, uh, we then had a presentation from uh, Maddie regarding the tree protection initiatives. Uh, she gave us an overview, noting that the last time we discussed the results of the resident survey, we thought that the residents were in favor of a tree bylaw. However, uh, the consultant made an error and uh, in the results of the tree bylaw, the actual results are the opposite of what they initially showed us. The real results was that the tree bylaw was the least favorable choice, so we made that uh, correction known. <clears throat> so our plan had been to hold a resident focus group to determine how residents felt about a tree bylaw, but uh, after reassessing, um, what engagement is needed based on the corrected survey results. The survey actually show that residents are more in favor of other non-bylaw non options, uh, though support was still there for the tree bylaw by by components for development properties. <clears throat> Maddie noted that uh, we have a public tree planting program that's ready to go. Maddie plans to work with the maintenance staff to look at what uh, we do in terms of tree maintenance. Department is looking uh, at budgeting for a water truck um, to water the trees that we plant. If we're going to get in the business of planting lots of trees, we want to make sure they grow. So we're going to look into uh, a, a uh, funding for a, a water truck. And we could, yeah, we could uh, tie that into recreation and use it for, for the recreation department's uh, ranks. So it's a great idea, and I think uh, it'll serve a lot of purposes for the town. So we, uh, we definitely look at, at uh, getting that water truck. Uh, Robert then, uh, CAO, CA, <laughs> CAOUs, then led a discussion on uh, uh, development consultation regarding uh, the development approval process. Um, we do need um, to, uh, to look at some of these initiatives, Robert presented some, some good ideas and I think uh, collectively we as, as a town, as a council, um, and it's, it was brought up earlier in our planning uh, department discussions, but uh, we just, uh, we started the conversation led by CAO, CA, <laughs> CAOUs. <laughs> I'm going to just refer to you as Robert from now on. <laughs> I don't know why I'm tongue-tied on that one, but I am, so I'm just going to not say it anymore. Um, but it's just about how we address the residents uh, and the developers, how that interaction happens. Uh, you know, it's... Um, if you do it the wrong way, then the residents aren't cl properly educated. You can run into scenarios where when they first meet here, it, it becomes a, 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 um, more adversarial than perhaps it should be. 
and we want to look at ways to, to properly educate the, um, the residents um, prior to, to arriving at that point where, there's, where there is a, a meeting or, or a consultation with developers. So just we, we chatted a bit about where to go with that and, and it'll be a continuous discussion. <clears throat> we, uh, we then uh, had a, a discussion about the waterfront park and uh, our planning review. Um, Robert noted that the town owns some land on the waterfront that was deeded over as parkland as part of the approval of the uh, subdivision for the first phase of Southport Landing. We also had some parkland deeded over to us when EPM built their apartment building. In addition, we bought 30,000 square feet of land in front of the APM building. And we have the treatment site, which will be freed up in the, in the very new, near future. Uh, through an RFP process, uh, the town engaged, is, engaged the services of Upland, a planning and design firm from Dartmouth. They are going to conceptually design the waterfront parkland. They are going to conceptually design a beautified gateway, and they are going to review the waterfront core area zoning standards. That, uh, that, that summarizes my report, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Any, uh, any comments or questions for Councillor McDougall? Um, I'd just like to reiterate under Section 9 of the Development Consultation, I think that's a very, very positive move, and I'll back that 100%. I think that's the step in the right direction we're, we're making here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I would just, um, in your report, when it talks about the building park expansion, and um, uh, committee members noted that, um, and it's been a concern of mine too, I feel that there's businesses in the business park right now that potentially should be on front streets as opposed as, in, as opposed to in a business park. And so, you know, as the Gray Group moves along in the development of the urban core, you'll probably start to see some of those businesses come from the business park out into those front retail places. Um, so there might be a natural progression over, but it, I, I get that it's right now it's a tight spot because you're sold out in the business park. But um, yeah, you, do, you don't want to uh, um, create a space where we're almost competing with the gray group on that. So um, just to be cognizant of those businesses in the business park that would probably rather be on front streets once those commercial spaces start coming up, I think that's key. Yeah, that's uh, it's correct, uh, Councillor Burridge, and that discussion was was had. And in fact, uh, the committee recommended a um, a conversation with the Grave Group um, as part of the 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 planning of the next phase. And, and you're right, uh, we've discussed that. You're 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 right, and we will uh, we will consult with that group. And and we're we're aware that uh, a lot of the businesses that currently exist there likely shouldn't be there. Okay, uh, just before we move on, I just want to um, mention as well that um, um, our Stratford resident, Rosemary Curley, uh, was a member of Sustainability Committee and uh, uh, won't be continuing with the committee and I'd like to pay tribute to her as well. She, um, she's contributed a lot uh, in terms of the environmental file over the years and uh, really um, um, want to thank her for all her contributions to um, um, protecting our environment here in Stratford as well. Any other comments or questions for Councillor McDougall? If not, thank you for your report, Councillor. I'll move on to, um, I think my report is next. Yeah, accountability and engagement. Um, we, um, we did have a, a meeting uh, in September, um, and uh, we um, it was a virtual meeting, uh, as all committee me um, meetings are. Um, mostly it was a discussion around the town's communication and engagement documents and, and our strategy um, and the work that we do uh, to engage residents. Um, 
And the consensus from the committee was that overall the town is doing a lot of positive work in this regard. Um, but we will be, uh, um, uh, Wendy Watts, uh, business development officer, will uh, business development and engagement uh, manager, will be preparing a RFP for services from a qualified firm to do a review of our engagement and communication uh, plans and documents and strategy, uh, including looking at updating these and um, reviewing the overall process and the reviewing the work that's underway by town staff uh, as well as part of this RFP. So we hope to have that out uh, in November. Um, and really, um, even though I know we do a, uh, a good job, we, we do uh, get a lot of input from residents, um, it would be good to look at some of the best practices in other jurisdictions and, uh, and really learn and, and see if there's anything we can do better uh, to, uh, to really make the best use of the expertise and the professionalism that we have out there in, uh, uh, among our residents to, um, to help uh, make better decisions or have them contribute to uh, um, their expertise and, and opinions to, uh, to our decision-making process. Uh, also, uh, I just want to mention that the committee application deadline uh, for residents uh, who want to, um, who would like to be on uh, town committees uh, is this Friday at 12 noon. I really encourage all residents to, um, who would like to, to apply to serve on, uh, on the upcoming two-year uh, committee term. Uh, the application is on the town's website. It is something that, um, um, it's something that we can, we really value the contribution of residents uh, to, um, to our town by, by providing their opinions and their, their perspectives. Uh, it gives us, uh, um, it's a valuable tool in our decision making. I think all councillors will agree that uh, the citizen members of the committee uh, really offer a wide range of um, expertise and opinions and, uh, and perspectives that uh, really help us make better decisions. So I really encourage residents to apply on this. As well, um, as Councillor McDougall mentioned, um, there is an online engagement opportunity for residents uh, to share their ideas and their vision for the waterfront. Um, and it is uh, available until November 2nd uh, online uh, through our website. Um, and we will be having upcoming focus groups um, that residents can sign up for online as well. Um, and that information is available at our website, uh, www townofstratford.ca. So I'd encourage residents to really share their ideas and opinions about uh, what we should do with the waterfront um, and, um, and also um, look at uh, if you have the time to be a, um, part of a focus group uh, uh, or a, an online discussion forum to, um, uh, to give us your opinions and ideas for the waterfront. So that's my report. Any questions or comments on uh, on my report, just wondering, Your Worship, if uh, if it's possible, we could get the, a list of the names of our committees who already replied, so that we could perhaps give a little email or a personal phone call to to see if they're interested in coming back or going on another committee. And yeah, I have the uh, email addresses of, of my of the accountability and engagement committee. Uh, I would like the phone numbers. I think you're right that it yeah. would, does add a personal touch to yeah. uh, to make a phone call. I don't know if that's possible, uh, Wendy, uh, to do that. Yeah, the names were provided to all the department managers this week, and then they were following up um, as needed. So they would have, through their committee lists, would have the phone numbers and stuff as well. So if you just want to check okay, with them so for anybody. So the, the staff person responsible for supporting each committee would, uh, would have those phone yep, numbers there's, and would there's make, committee them, lists kept. make them yep. available to, uh, yeah, that would be great to, uh, to have everyone call their committee members. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Just, uh, I'm sorry to make you stand up again, Wendy, but uh, just wondered how the application process is going. Do you have any numbers uh, that you can share with us yet, or do, you, do we have? Are we getting uh, uh, much response uh, so far? Yeah, we are actually. We're getting quite a bit. Um, I would say we're probably 70, 75 percent to to where we would need to be in the end. I mean, it's it's hard to. I don't have an exact count on it, but. Um, we do have quite a few applications in, and, and last time we certainly ended up with, with more applications than we had spaces for, which is, is a, a great problem 
to have Absolutely. for us because it certainly gives us the chance to to go through and and uh, allow for some of that turnover to happen and people to be moved around on different committees and things like that so yeah no there's definitely lots of lots of interest still great thank you any other comments or questions okay i'll just get my agenda back up here uh, we'll go now to uh, human resources. Uh, no report on human no resources. No reports, Your Worship. No. Okay. At this time, I'll ask for any inquiries by any member of council about any item about the town or about our agenda or any other business. No? Uh, your, your Worship, um, the FCM, which is the federal municipalities, are having their Zoom meeting tomorrow. And I understand some councillors didn't get the email about the meeting. Uh, it's from 1 to 4 or something like that tomorrow. And uh, I have signed on. I, I will be zooming in on it. But I don't know if anybody else is, knows about it or n not. Well, I'll, I'll ask uh, Councillor McDonald to uh, respond to that if uh, mm. you have the information, Councillor McDonald. And uh, naturally, I don't, Your Worship. So, okay, uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't, didn't come know. up at FPIM. I, I didn't know that's the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, uh, so I'm, I'm not aware of that, uh, Councillor Smith. I'm not sure uh, if you got an email directly from. Not me. Okay. Okay, if you could share that, I'd appreciate it. Uh, well, I'll, I'll try to, my limited technology expertise, I'll try to send that on. <clears throat> I'll ask our Chief Administrative Officer Hughes to uh, respond if there's, uh, do you have any information about this? It could be fish one. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other uh, inquiries by members of council about any any issue or item? Okay. If not, uh, we'll go to the Stratford Seniors Complex Seniors Report, October 2020. I'll ask Councillor McDonald, who chairs that committee, to give a report. Sure. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, a couple of things going on over there. Um, our Street Brothers will be installing. Um, patio doors in three of our units uh, late, later on this month. And we're doing some bedroom windows in three of the units in November. Uh, the windows were just on back order, likely due to COVID as well. Uh, so we're waiting right now on the board's approval on the draft budget for 2021. Just having trouble getting a quorum there for our meetings. So we're doing a lot of uh, email communication with the, uh, with the committee. Uh, but it will be ready for um, our council, our committee, the whole meeting at the end of the month. And uh, so we're also reviewing quotes for walkway snow removal and salting at the seniors complex. And uh, a decision is being made at committee level right now. And we have, we're going to have a vacant unit as of November 1st, uh, but we have to get it ready and then showing it in November. So it'd like to be ready for December 1st, hopefully. And the fall maintenance is currently being completed at the complex, and everything else is good there. That's my report, Your Worship. And do you have a waiting list uh, that you know of? We do, yes. Yeah, so yes, there'll so be no problem filling that. No, no, for sure. Okay. Any other comments or questions on Council McDonald's report? Okay. Thank you for your report. You're welcome, Your Worship. Okay, we'll move on to um, appointments to the committees. Um, and... Um, I've met with each uh, chair of each committee, uh, and uh, I've asked them to uh, to stay on. I think uh, everyone's agreed to um, to continue uh, mm -hmm. with their current uh, portfolios. A uh, couple of advantages to that: the um, um, they know that each chair has. It takes a while to learn each uh, each portfolio, and um, um, and as well, there are several things that are underway that I think the continuity is going to be important. Uh, each of the uh, portfolios so uh, but I, what, what I do plan to do is to rotate or change all of the uh, vice chairs so that um, each committee will uh, each councillor will have an opportunity to learn another portfolio through becoming vice chair of a new uh, of a new portfolio and uh, so I'll be uh, announcing those I'll be meeting with um, chief administrative officer Hughes and uh, going over it with him to get his input, and as well, I'll be going over it with the deputy mayor um, to, to get his uh, comments as well, and then I'll be announcing it, uh, uh, calling it to everyone to, to let them know uh, what their new vice chair uh, 
appointment will be. Um, so that's that's my plan right now. Any any comments or, or questions on that? Okay, if not, uh, we will be getting new members of, of each committee uh, um, in terms of citizen uh, resident uh, members. So those will also come into effect um, first of December, I believe, uh, Robert? Yes. Yeah. Okay, if there's no other, um, no proclamations, uh, no any other business, anything else anyone would like to put on the table at this point? If not, I'll call for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Okay, we're now adjourned. Thank you all.